Mm. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the first episode of the Pokeball Podcast. Mm, Are you sure that's gonna be our Pokeball? Our not po- po- I don't if we eat something else next time, then we call something else. Uh. Okay, so it changes it according to our meals. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so who we are are Christians who are in um, various means of social media, of production, and but we're also friends. Mm. Yeah, classmates even. Mm. <laughs> yeah, Most important. Cl- yeah, theology yeah. class. <laughs> Bring it so I think we can bring that perspective of theology and Christianity into the area of by social media. Of God. <laughs> yeah. But that's what this conversation is going to be about. Mm-hmm. It's about social media, but also the role that uh, Christians, the role that churches can play in this space. And today we want to talk about how uh, to get started. Uh, we want to talk about how we got started individually in this in different areas. So maybe as a kind of introduction, you can say a bit about ourselves and what we are doing in this space. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Lydia, maybe if you could start. Well, hi, I'm Lydia. So basically, what, as in like, what am I working? Um, basically, I'm whatever. I'm helping my parents out with whatever they ask me to do. If they want grab delivery, grab driver, grab okay, but it's more like I'm being a PA to my parents right now. But I'm more like handling their um, uh, portfolios, their own. I see. Their own. They have their own wealth in the way, and they they just needed a second generation to I oversee see. it. Okay. <laughs> and after sounds that, like they really trust you, uh, I think because <laughs> family. <laughs> because oh, I'm the only weird odd one in the family that's not working directly under my parents company I'm the odd one out but the thing is hmm. the odd one out also give me flexibility to help my parents in their own personal hmm. sense okay. hmm. yeah and I also get to be close to my parents and also yeah flexibility to that's come so to SPTC <laughs> I, yeah. Think, yeah. I think Lydia can do um, an episode on stewardship yeah, yeah. that'd be great you and your parents stewardship hello ma <laughs> 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 but yeah, legacy. Uh, yeah. But other, other than that, I, I, I would say I'm, I do freelance, but I, I wouldn't say it as a full time. It's whenever a friend need need a help, like you know, um, if they need help with podcasts, I also mm. help to set up. Also, that's right. Yeah, and yeah. also, uh, maybe simple like uh, like weddings, friends. Uh, I, I'm, I'm definitely the the very below market value, <laughs> but I'm, I just wanted to do it. You out are of, captain out. of everything. Yeah, I'm just here to help out. You know, as a friend, and I yeah. think it's also more like keeping my skills alive. Mm. I think yeah. that's why people ask you to help because they know you for one uh, thing, yeah. but also they can depend on you. Yeah, so, like all these cameras, everything, this was set up by you. Man. <laughs> no, the microphone and also, oh, the cameras also by Kelvin. That's why it sounds yeah. so bad, la. but actually, the cameras, I really appreciate this. So much technical <laughs> yeah, knowledge. Yeah, yeah. Good, it's good stuff. Thanks, thanks, Lydia. No um, Mayfern, can you tell us a bit about yourself? Mm, yeah. Um, so, my name is Mayfern, or you can call me Fern. And basically, I, I guess I've been working um, in sort of like the creative line mm. uh, for a really long time. I started off in uh, photography. Mm. Uh, the first thing that I wanted to become after I graduated from uni was to be a fashion photographer. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> Obviously, that didn't happen. Film dresses um, very well. Every time, I always look forward to an OOTDs of the day. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Um, yeah, but that was actually um, the first thing that I wanted to be. I wanted to be a fashion photographer. So mm. I started off um, really learning a lot about photography, how to handle a camera, okay. uh, working in a photography studio as well. And then um, there were a lot of detours, did a lot of different things. Finally ended up where I am today, which is uh, with a non-profit organization, Christian, mm-hmm. Christian yeah. non-profit organization. Uh, and, and then I'm doing Bible, <laughs> Bible school as well, yeah. together with yeah. these two. Yeah, and then uh, recently I started uh, a platform for women called Girl on Gold on social media. And I think the platform is really new. I feel like I've barely started, but I think what is not new to me, I think, is Mm. the idea of content creation or creating content. Mm. Because over the years, um, I've really dabbled a lot on my own with sort of like behind the scenes. Mm. uh, So this is something of your own uh, you've been doing for other people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So... um, creating a lot of stuff for like Instagram or stuff like that but but really for my own pleasure rather okay. than for anything um, public in that sense okay yeah um, also on the other hand I've also dabbled in you know like trying to start different uh, businesses which never worked out but then creating content for that as well but it was always okay. like playing around uh, mm. the online social media slash digital space 
Yeah. Mm. So my my newest thing is this platform called Girl on Go. Girl on Go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you're Amazing. creating something of your own, but so. also public to help other people. Mm, mm, yeah. 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 Very cool. Uh, I'm Calvin. Uh, I uh, moved back to Malaysia from the UK about a year and a bit ago. And that's why I joined SBTC, but that's also why I started doing a bit more stuff on social media. And usually what I post is what it's like going to Bible college. And also kind of like my discovery of um, coming to church here in Malaysia. So. Definitely follow him. It's really, really fun content. <laughs> Definitely not your usual boring. If you need you'll something light, you'll see a lot of them. You go find yeah, his uh. contents. Kelvin Cam <laughs> chair or Daily Cam. Uh, the there, reading show. There's a lot of quantity, sure. not so much quality, lah. But yes, if you're looking for something every day, I can promise you, you will find a new thing every day. Yep. Respect. Yeah. Respect. Okay. All right. All right. So, um, question number one. The whole point of this is to talk about how to get started into mm. something like social media. I'm thinking about people who follow a lot of people like churches or personalities that they admire on social media, mm -hmm. but they're thinking, how can I get started? And so I, I thought maybe we could answer that for ourselves, you know, how we got started in this area, what was the first thing that we did? Mm -hmm. And maybe you could start again with Lydia, if that's okay? So how to get started as in content, like putting up content or what? Or a channel <sighs> of your own? Well, I guess for you, it was that, was it in church that you got, got involved mm, in just yeah. handling all the equipment and the gear and then being involved yeah. in the whole pipeline? That's, that's yeah, because it was, <laughs> um, unfortunately, I'm not as like, you know, self-driven like Kelvin here. He's like very passionate. For me, it's like, it was work, started with work. Um, oh, yeah, the job is, here. Yeah, yeah, I had the job in, at the church itself, at the creative agency. Mm. Uh, it's called Matt Square. And Matt Square, it has been a great... Um, starting a platform for me to learn because they're always in need of people <laughs> so that means mm. you're always definitely going to be utilized to the maximum so you're going to be thrown into different areas where you're going to serve um, so you didn't know anything before you joined i mean i just know how to to be the basic stuff but i think it's wow. because also i have a little bit of interest in wanting to know like, okay because i always like telling stories and making mm. movie and editing is a, a another thing that I okay <laughs> I, so I you need have to, to learn it okay uh, and then after that so I, yeah I like to share daily lives if it's something inspiring if it's something helpful like tips on how I definitely like to do that but so the thing about Lydia is that she knows the whole pipeline so she knows how to handle the camera <laughs> yeah. she knows how the technical settings you know actually what professionals do mm. but then she also hosts and she has a personality she's not scared you know <laughs> You know, she just turned up today and yeah. then she turned on the camera. But even editing, which is like the post-production, you know, color grading, mm. all that kind of thing. You have this full knowledge of every aspect yeah. to do with production. Uh, thankfully, Except maybe you don't, you, don't, you don't promote yourself. You don't actually do the actual <laughs> um, publishing onto Instagram and stuff. Uh, I mean, I do. I mean, if it's, if it's, if it's, it's all about if I have motivation, <laughs> I have the okay, motivation right. to do yeah. it. Um, but yeah, I am thankfully I learned all all these pipeline skills. Definitely, is being trained on the job, and I do I do have the knowledge. But it's you yeah. it, you have the knowledge, but you can never know until you put it on hands on. I so see. So you definitely have to have that that putting in. And, yeah. and going deep and you know going to the tough point learning a lot of mistakes along the way okay. definitely oh no why my emix looks very fuzzy the person is wobbling too much oh yeah you yeah. need to change all your shutter speed and all these things oh there's so shutter much technical speed. things behind there that, that, that you do not know that you thought like oh you know just press the button and on the camera and no. it works auto okay. and it's fine amazing but sometimes auto there's not much it cannot help you if it's <laughs> if it's broken if the footage I is broken see. you can't really save it anymore so it's always a lot of learning mistakes and then you're able to get better each time yeah. okay okay i really appreciate that so it sounds like for lydia it's really just doing it and yeah. then as you do it uh, you interest. learn yeah and the way you need to have an interest so i that's why i like mm. to story tell in a way la. so I, okay. I that's why i like to go up on stage and host like tell all the bad jokes. you're very good at it yeah <laughs> bad jokes. but i like to tell stories if you ask but preach, preach preaching is another story <laughs> but but yeah, I like to just putting the joy in people's faces right? mm. and or maybe being helpful. I and I do find fulfillment in helping someone mm. in from my experience to help someone mm. or to make someone day better. That's what really pushed me to learn to take take up. 
That's interesting. So at the skill level, it's very technical. You actually like tweaking stuff. You don't like going auto. But at the motivation level, actually, you like telling stories. Yeah. You like bringing joy to people's lives. Mm. And so that translates across, you know, the medium, the technicality is just a way for you to do yes. that. Yes, correct, correct. I think yeah. even nowadays, you don't need a special camera to able to, I mean, you do need a very fantastic old 10K camera to do the job. As mm. long as you have the content, even nowadays, phones can be quite good. The quality mm. is good okay. enough. That's but okay. it's only for, if it's for social media. If you want to do something more cinematic, higher quality, then you can invest in better gears. But mm. it's to get started in the food, to get you going like Kelvin, generating content almost every day. I don't have the resilience of him. <laughs> it's, mine is more on like keep saying that. I don't know whether it's a good thing. I, I, yeah. I, need the dis- I need the discipline like, like Kelvin. Then <laughs> I'm, if not, I'm sure I'm able to do even more a better, greater mm. stuff than I am mm. right now. I see, I see. So okay. practice really matters. Definitely. Mm. Putting in, uh, yeah, you can have all the hate knowledge. Yeah, I can. I yeah. know. I, I think I know how to ride a bike. But you, until you put on, put someone's mm. leg on a bike, you will never know you fall down and all this thing. So yeah. it sounds to me like just getting started in an area that will keep you going. Mm. That's that's how you get started. Yeah, the purpose definitely finding the okay. purpose. Uh, mm. why you want to do it for. Mm. Okay. Yeah, Very it does right. help you. It does give you that drive. And of course, maybe don't don't care about much about getting the likes and all these things. It's the purpose and in the long term, not the okay. short term gain. Yeah. I see. Mm. Okay. That's very helpful. Yeah, Thanks yeah. so much. Oh. Mayfan, how would you answer the question? You know, how did you get started into this? How did I get started? <laughs> I feel like it's such a long story. So like I, I said earlier, I've always um leaned more into the creative side of things, creative type of work. That was what I was always uh, naturally drawn into. Uh, so years ago, back when I was still in high school, there was this whole thing about like blogs. I don't know if you guys remember, like yep. everyone okay. had yep. a blog. Yeah. And yeah. That, that, I yeah. think that was the start of like the influencer era, right? Like people were like monetizing the blogs and all that. So I never monetized a blog, but I had a blog that I very diligently kept up with. What's the, okay. what's the meme? <laughs> yeah, I think yeah, it's gone true. already. Yeah. It's like on That's true. A lot of the blocks <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. are they still around. It yeah. I, just memories. I think the platforms are still around, but mm. I don't know if people are still yeah, so it's like blogger. Mm. Um, That's right. Yeah. Right. What what else were that? I can't I can't live journal, I think. Mm. Wow, <laughs> it's okay. still showing our age, but wow, okay. <laughs> so so I was now this Reddit. Reddit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Now it's Reddit. <laughs> Yeah. So I doing. would be so diligent, you know, at that time. I would like mm. um I would always have a camera with me to document like my life with my friends okay. and then I would yeah. write and I would I would put a lot of care and thought into like how I was writing. So I was honing a lot of my writing skills through then. Okay. Yeah, so I think it, it it's now looking back, I think I've realized that that is what I've always leaned into. Content okay. creation. Yeah. Maybe similar to Lydia, like telling a story. Yeah having a message and then after that um, going into you know after from blogging I went into uh, photography at mm, one point I wanted okay. to be an artist I wanted to be a painter you paint, you paint as well <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah Lydia paints too yeah I know I watercolor <laughs> uh, yeah but not you go to a cafe your medium yeah. is, yeah. is more acrylic right I use acrylic. Yeah, yeah, acrylic. yeah, yeah, right. yeah. more watercolor. Yeah, yeah. Wow, small. okay, very yeah. artistic. Bigger canvas. <laughs> Mine, my canvas is A6. Okay. Can do small <laughs> also <laughs> with acrylic. <laughs> <laughs> I just like bigger canvases. Yeah. Um, but anyway, yeah, so, so I think creating was always something that felt very natural for me. Mm, okay. Mm. And then I became a Christian, and that was like in my mid 20s. And one of the things that I was, I was always asking was, God, what's what's my purpose? Okay. You know, what, what should I do? Um, and also wrestling with like what I felt was a creative gift. <clears throat> okay. I think, and, and yeah. with some of my creative friends as well, I've had this conversation where, you know, as a creative, sometimes you are very much a feeler. So I was that typical like artsy fartsy type, very emotional, okay. very angsty. Mm. And I think creating for me came from that space a lot yeah. of times. But then when I became a Christian, I felt like I could no longer do that because God was changing everything about me from the inside oh, out. Okay. So even the way I wanted to express myself, the things that I wanted to say mm. was very different. And there was a whole season where I couldn't create anything. There was nothing that was coming out. I, I just didn't have the inspiration. And that was <clears throat> really a wrestle. But I think looking yeah. back, I really felt like it was because God was doing a lot of interior work. 
So okay. nothing could come out because because everything that we create has to come from a space that is inspired by God, right? Okay. So I think me wrestling with what I felt was a creative gift and a creative call has been something that I've been going through. And over the years, I think having journeyed with God, you know, praying, uh, being in community, one of the things that's maybe starting to get clearer for me in this season is that I feel, number one, that the creative gifting and calling is for a purpose. Okay. Um, I feel like ultimately, I wouldn't say that I'm a photographer, or I'm a writer, or I'm an okay. artist or whatever, but yeah. I think ultimately what I would say is that I'm a communicator. And that's okay. what draws me yeah. into creating because I feel like there is a message that I have to communicate. There is something that I want to tell people. There's something that I want to say to people, but mm. I can use different mediums to say the same thing. Okay. All right. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So I think I think for me maybe that is what is driving the desire to create these days. And then I think the second thing is, is really feeling like if I had to distill an audience, hmm. I feel called to uh, women and children in particular. Okay. So it's like this this two this two audience. Yeah. So I think I think you know. Having gone through that process and then doing a lot of like back and forth in my mind, girl on goal was something that I uh, restarted this year. So I tried to start. Yeah, it. can you tell us what is <laughs> girl on goal? Oh, amazing. Yeah, so I it is still I guess a uh, WIP. It's it's the definition and all that is still in the works. But ultimately, okay. I think it's really a platform to speak um, with women and to women about living the lives that we were created to live. Because I think okay. one of the things that I've always been quite captured by is this idea that God has a plan and a purpose for each of our lives mm. you know and sometimes the adventure is that we're going on that journey of discovering what he has made me for and the Bible okay. says that every every day of our lives is written in his book right like God okay. already knows yeah. Yeah, what we are, yeah 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 <laughs> like every every page of our life every day of our lives every moment mm. God already knows what's going to happen and he knows what he wants to do with our lives so the great adventure is is wow. discovering that but I think a lot of times we have that sense of purpose we have that sense that we are made for something more but the question is how do I find it okay. and then how do I step into it so I think that's the area that I really want to speak into and okay. have conversations and about and it mirrors your own, exp your, and, and your, your own journey as well for, yeah. for sure because that's been like the biggest thing in my life right yeah. and I think I think maybe it's in this season I'm starting to see that God will use our stories okay. right. to speak yeah. into other people because I can't speak if it's something that I haven't lived through. Okay. The only reason why I can speak into a certain area okay. is really because I've had that journey, right? Mm. So there's something I can say about it. But of course, people can disagree or disagree. We, we, uh, they can agree or disagree because we all have a lot of... Um, all our experiences are so different, yeah. right? But... There has okay. to be something from your own personal life, personal life journey that must be valuable to someone else as well. Yeah, so I think okay. I think yeah. maybe that's that. what it is like that yeah. passion in in encouraging people and stirring people up to know you you need to know that there's more to life than this. Okay. There is something for us um, and and God wants us to live that fullness. Mm. To live in that fullness of what he's created us to be. So the question is, how do I find how? that and how yeah. do I step into that? Yeah, so okay. that's goal on goal. And you're helping people to do that as well. It's very interesting to compare, you know, the similarities, but also the slightly different approaches that both of you have. For you, you actually learned up the technical skills, mm. but you brand yourself as a storyteller. Mm. But for you, you actually put the skills and the creative thing on pause. When you became a Christian, you actually needed to find that story first. And then now as you're, as you're discovering what that story is, then the creativity comes in mm -hmm. as a means for you to discover it yourself but to help other people. Mm -hmm. So I think for some people, it will be one or the other as well. Yeah, the journey. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sometimes it's just the circumstances. <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh, so why why do you say that? Why, why do you say uh, circumstances? I don't know. It's like, maybe. Some people start with an intention to earn money and they thought, like, oh, yeah, maybe. And then they went in and they realized, oh, I found my purpose through the circumstances. Yeah, so, that's yeah, true. So, yeah, sometimes you never know where God will lead you along the way anyway. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and, you know, money in the sense of being just being practical mm. and they might have just found a job in the creative space, but then suddenly found, hey, actually, I really enjoy this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes, I think, life works that way it's only in the doing that you find the purpose mm -hmm. oftentimes you want the purpose before we actually do something mm -hmm. but actually it's wonderfully experimental life mm -hmm. when actually you try something like you know I'm more calm you never tried durian before go oh I love this or even if they hate it but actually until they try it they don't know mm -hmm. and there's a certain kind of like 
material, tangible way that God has built into creation such that we can try stuff, we can discover it, and then God dis- reveals that purpose in that doing. Mm, I really like that. Mm. Okay. Yeah, but it starts yeah. with a heart of openness to learn. Yeah, there is. Right, I if think you're like, no, I'm going to keep my comfortable zone in what? In, oh, I'm an engineer. I should be only doing engineer jobs where I mean, the market is like. You, you know, know, that's point. true. I think a lot of times we decide our days based on what we don't want to do. <laughs> I think a lot of things in life as well. I mean, when we were kids, right, we wanted to do everything. We wanted to be fireman, we wanted to be superman, whatever, whatever kind of thing. Lah. Mm. But then when we grow up, we say, I don't want to do this. I don't like this. I don't like to eat that. I don't want to go to this kind of place. Yeah. And so immediately we've cut off a lot of options to life mm. that we don't even know whether we like or not because mm. simply because we don't venture there. Mm. Yeah, I like how I was listening to a discussion I don't know, it was a podcast by John Mark Comer. He is mm. an author. Mm. He was quoting someone else, so it's not going to be. He was, saying, he was saying Christianity is essentially God leading you to places that you're not quite sure, or something like that. Mm. Something about, he was describing okay. what the Christian life is like. Mm. And it's a lot of it is more obedience than it is um, your mm. own self fulfillment. Mm. And that will mean that actually God will bring you to places that you don't quite know, you're not quite mm. sure. Might be more difficult than it is easy, but mm. at the end of the day, it's that faithfulness, that obedience, that joy that comes from obeying God. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's really great. What yeah. about yourself, Kelvin? Uh, oh, okay. Um, mine was a pandemic story. Mm. Other people yeah, were making the Dalgona coffee. I was doing live streams every day. So what I would do, do during the lockdown was, um, every day I would turn on the camera and for one hour, I would read the Bible and then talk about it. Oh, yeah. So that's but why it's called. Also, why, yeah. why, why did you what decide you to uh, start yeah. that? Yeah. Why read the Bible like on camera for an hour? Ah, that's true. Okay, that's a good question because right after that, I had a Bible study. So I had a Zoom Bible study mm. with my church. And then this was kind of like because all of us were learning how to do it. So I felt like it didn't go very well. So I needed more practice. Mm. So I needed practice doing Bible studies for that daily Bible study mm. that I had. And also, I needed practice for the Sunday sermons that I was preaching as well. Mm. So remember You're talking th- about you guys not knowing how to do things online. Yeah, uh, okay. exactly. Mm-hmm. Okay. So it's, it's, it's really getting used to talking to an empty room, mm. you know, um, trying to make eye contact, all that kind of thing. Lah. So I did that. I, I decided I need more practice. I did it every single day right after work. I was working. So at 6 p.m., I'll do from 6 to 7, the daily Bible reading show every day. Mm. Uh, and then from 7 to 8, I'll do a Bible study on Zoom. Mm. So it was kind of like a regimented schedule. Mm. Yeah, so that's it. That's it. Uh, no, one, no one watches it anymore. It's still there. You, you find, <laughs> if you go there, you look for it, you'll find like three follow views, him, five views. Him. It's so boring. It's really, it got to the point whereby I was just trying to, because I knew no one was watching. That's a great thing. You, you don't have the pressure because <laughs> it's, it's really, I go to a small, tiny little um, church, the English congregation is less than 10 people. The Bible study, you've got three people, so very good already. Mm. So, like, I did crazy stuff. Like, um, there was one time I thought I'll make the whole Bible study to music. So I played, played, the, played the keyboard while reading Second King, some weird thing. Then, then, jeng, jeng, jeng. And it was very stupid, but it helped me overcome all of the hurdles of mm. being camera shy mm. or thinking on the fly or even looking in the camera, that kind of thing. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so for me, the pandemic helped me to do this. Wow. Amazing. Good yeah. things that come out of the pandemic, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, well, that's how we started. You know, I wonder, you know, what's your story or what it is that you think you need to get you going? Um, I think one thing I would add to what we just mentioned is, I think the reason why I'm doing this is because it's just more fun doing it with friends. Yay. <laughs> and I think anything that you can do that's not just you yourself, because you're no longer stuck in the pandemic, why not you know, discuss it at the very least or maybe try it out with someone else? Mm. Mm. Yeah. I think yeah, like, the initiative, it's interesting that you have the initiative, yeah, I want to do something like this. <laughs> and, but you also say okay one. Yeah. This, this guy, this, it, it really, only, only they will say okay it one. It really start, starts with one person and, and, then, someone and, needs then, to it, ask. It, and then yeah. it catches along. Correct, correct. Yeah, it really, it, it doesn't always work that way, but yeah. if you find the right people, yeah, it's fun. It's, it's even more fun than yeah. just doing it itself. All right, so that's question one, how to get started. But number two, purpose. You know, what's the mm. point of doing something like this on social media or making mm. it public and putting it on Instagram? Mm. And I'll actually, um, 
Actually, yeah, I'll start with me and then mm. we'll go to Mayfair and then we'll go to mm. Lydia. Right. Okay, so for me, right, um, it is... Again, I mentioned that I came back to Malaysia one year ago and um, before that I was doing that like, live stream that no one watches. But when I knew I was coming back to Malaysia, I went on Instagram. Mm. Before that, my Instagram didn't exist. Okay. Okay. Why? Um, for two, two, two reasons. One friend was doing it on Instagram for ministry and I was very impressed by him. His guy, this guy named Edril Teo, you know, he, he does this thing called Malaysian Christian memes and it's so cheesy. You want to say funny or so? Not really funny lah. But it's very ministry minded. Every picture I then got one karangan down there about talking about Jesus, talking about the Bible, reference, everything. Man. And I thought, hey, actually this kind of thing quite effective, uh, quite effective because a lot of people were actually being very encouraged by it. So that was one thing. It, it actually I saw it as a ministry tool. But number two, because I was coming back to this land called Malaysia where I knew no one, I realized that it was a way of making a first impression. Mm. So I started making like Instagram posts, I started making videos about my trip back to Malaysia. And I even talked about how I was coming to this church. And yeah. Was that when you when we first started SPTC? So uh, around that time was when you started your um, it was so SPTC starts around like August or September, right? Mm. I'm that was the year that lockdown opened up in January, mm -hmm. January that year. Mm -hmm. I came back in February for Chinese New Year. Mm -hmm. So one month after Malaysia opened, I had to wear the, 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 the wristband yeah, and the quarantine. <laughs> and one of my first videos is actually me in quarantine. Mm -hmm. But from that one trip and just that one visit to HTVP, I thought, okay, I'm going to move back to Malaysia. Wow. Yeah. So even my family was quite shocked, you know, having lived like 27 years abroad and oh, I moved back. Why? Uh? Um, it, was, it was a choice between two good things. Staying back in the UK would have been great. I loved my job. I loved the people there. I loved my church there. Mm. But then I thought, you know, there's so much that I want to discover here. Mm. And it would be a good thing to start afresh when I still can. Mm. So coming back, to, coming back to Malaysia, moving back to my family. And SPTC, honestly, I just came for one open day. I just signed up <laughs> simply because it was something to do here. God. That's all. I, I mean... It is a good course, mm -hmm. but be, in all honesty, I didn't know it was very good. I just signed up as something to do because it meant that I knew that there was a library, I knew that there was a course, I knew that I could come on Sundays. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that fits in with the social media thing as well because, you know, all the people that I was getting to know, I was stalking them on social media. <laughs> and sure. so, because I couldn't see them face to face, mm -hmm. I was online. And so I thought, okay, a way of engaging with them is just to have my own Instagram account. And then, so if you remember the first three months of SPTC, I was still in UK. Mm, okay. I was zooming in. I was just a square on the yeah. screen every week. Yet still stand out. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, well, the, what they mean is actually on my end, I was in the UK. I recorded myself every week going for class. And so that was the start of all my vlogs. I recorded myself going for the class and I had episodes every week of what it was like waking up at 2 a.m. to go for early morning oh, classes. Yes, because of the time differences. Time differences. You guys would wake up at 9 a.m. for intensive week classes. It's happening this Saturday. But UK is eight hours uh, behind. That means I have to wake up at 1 a.m. to go for class. So yeah, so, so I recorded that. That was an episode and yeah. Uh, I just saw Mark Knight, by the way, popping his <laughs> our, our principal. principal, our principal. Was, What's this guy doing? Huh? <laughs> it's good, good, it's good. Yeah. It's SPTC on go. Yeah, yeah, this, this is promoting, promoting the class. And yeah, so that's why, that's why I started. I, I wanted you to get to know me before you actually met me in person. Mm. So that was kind of like me, kind of like letting you guys know who I was. And I find that carries on as well. Even now, I meet people who kind of like know me before they know me. And that way I can say to them first thing is tell me about yourself mm. because they feel as if they already talked to me or they know about me and then they feel free about telling me about their own story mm. yeah so that, that's me that's a that was a bit too long but yeah that's kind of like my motivation of using social media to make the social aspect uh, to meet other people mm. um, Mayfen what about you you know what would be your purpose or what do you think is a good purpose mm. for going on social media can you hear me chewing yes <laughs> ASMR <laughs> Give me, give me a minute, ah. Huh? It's quite good, though. <laughs> the lettuce there. Mm. This is this is the the nuts. <laughs> Welcome to Mukbang Channel. Yeah. Oh, Lydia, let's go to you first. 
oh me uh, like what's what's the purpose behind my social media actually if you were go, you were to go to my instagram you are feel free to follow me random madam but why um <laughs> yeah just random underscore madam and why would that be because i just need a record of my life you know it you'll be it'll be quite said when I maybe like uh, I'm already like a grandma 60s year old what did I do during my younger days oh all these memories I had I, oh I didn't know I have so much so much tenacious so much so much energy right, look at me right now just sitting in back <laughs> relaxing not doing anything productive <laughs> and, you, and, you, and it gets me going again I don't know maybe but I think it's just more like a journal of my life mm. and through the experiences I had and maybe sharing tips like oh I've been to this place and like oh it might inspire people like hey yeah I just want to go and this place and, and just come along so recently I just done a wood, 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 woodworking cabinet huh? really <laughs> that's right I'm sorry I'm you're sorry. so I, I you're okay. you do so you many do different things woodworking, woodworking. <laughs> I, can be, yeah, I do okay every week is a different yeah, yeah. activity I, we, we, the video is supposed to come out soon soon yeah if I have the mood <laughs> like, like, if I have the mood not like him he has the passion to do it for me it's like if I have the mood but for me it's like it's like I think why am I being this <laughs> so you want to be able to look right? back at these days not and just looking back like, I think it's just more like time is always limited and you don't want to go back and think yeah. Like, yeah, I could have done it during my younger days when I'm already yeah. holding a cane like yeah, I, could, I should have went to skydiving when I was younger and all but, uh, mm. but yeah there is a time for is everything that, is that, I'm not surprised if you do skydiving I know. would have been surprised right? yeah. <laughs> I, 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 did, I did you did before I did <laughs> But the thing is, it's more like there's a trainer. I mean, there's a guy behind. It's, okay, just, okay. it's just like bullying me around wow, around okay. Japan, Mount Fuji area. It was quite fun. It was quite okay. fun. Uh, not, not skydiving. It's more, more like par- sorry, paragliding. That's the word. Okay, all right. Paragliding. But I think it's more like there is a time for, for certain things. Mm. Right? The time to, 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 you know, basically there yeah. is, you know, I think age does affect our ability to do anything. Yeah, there yeah. is a kind of window where actually you can do this and yeah. you can actually make it fun and yeah, you can yeah. record exciting things that yeah. you're doing like skydiving when after this it might be a bit more harder and yeah. you want to look back I think, on those I think days. it's more like health uh. yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I, I fainted on the end oh no <laughs> 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 that would make it's, a very good like video actually concerns, right? that is health concerns uh, <laughs> but yeah I think cause maybe because I see my sisters right, and then they they already married and they have their kids and I like, felt like okay. their whole youth whole Time of their life is really being wasted. Um, oh no! Okay, all right. <laughs> Gone away by taking care of the children. So right now, because I'm still single, so like, I okay. definitely have myself right. before it. If it does come eventually, I better try to fit in as much mm. as, as much as I can. The YOLO life, lah. Yeah. In a way, YOLO, but also yeah. in a way, yeah. Just just thinking about there is the essence of time that pushes you to mm. do things you want to do. Interesting. I, you know, I. I know what you mean because what she posts is actually like videos of her experience yeah. and it's very real and it's essentially like a record. It's like the new version of the photo album that you had in the old days that your <laughs> grandma, grandpa used to use. But this is maybe even truer to life. And actually, you'd be surprised. You go on social media, you don't see a lot of real life. You see a mm. lot of um, kind yeah, of like life. stylized or just yeah. snapshots that's yeah. posed. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, it's make basically the intention at the end. You want more likes, approval, or you want yeah. with the intention to help mm. or to inspire. It's, it's either. Mm. Yes, mm. yes. Yeah. That's exactly, yeah. exactly. Mm. Yeah. Mm. 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 Yeah, no, that's this, cool. No, this content on social media is quite rubbish. I mean, it's, <laughs> they will do anything for the likes. And it's like, well, I would mm. dump myself eating this big bowl of chilies. And, mm. and it's I, kind of stupid. Now, now, I will challenge that assumption. I think what's happened is that there's more and more. So there's more of the bad stuff and the fake stuff and the things that are driven by likes and wanting you know, approval. But at the same time, because of that, there's more of the good stuff as well. I would say there's more of the stuff that people are just using it as a way of reaching out to other people, mm. sharing their lives, or maybe even championing a particular clause. Mm. And I think both come together. It's quite yeah. hard yeah. when the algorithm does not work like that. <laughs> yes, so <laughs> the only difference is the algorithm feeds you what you're looking for. Mm. So if you're looking for the good stuff, the algorithm will promote that. Mm. It'll mm-hmm. give you more of the good stuff. Yeah. Suggested for you, and then you see all the shitty yes. content. Uh, <laughs> they, and, and of course, they will also lean towards the stuff that you know everyone else is watching, which yeah. is not, maybe not good, good stuff. So it means you have to be more intentional about what you're looking for. Mm. That's true. Yeah. 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 That's cool. That's cool. Mayfun. Yeah. So what about you? Yeah. How? What's what do you think is a good um, motivation for going on social media? Yeah. I, I like how even like listening from um, from the two of you, it's mm. it's really quite different. So for Lydia, it's really it's it feels like it's more personal, mm. right? It's a personal record. And then uh, for Kelvin, you actually use it to meet 
people. Really, you're, you're quite intentional. Like, I think you're thinking about the connection, the possible connections uh, that could happen along the way. And yes. yeah, right, yeah. Um, for me, I think uh, where I am now, especially with Girl on Gold, it really just feels like it's obedience. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah so you really feel like God is calling you to do something yes. and you're just so, obeying out yes, of yes. obedience. Yeah, so I think at one point in my life, if you you know you've spoken to me like five years ago six years ago it would have been more like um i want to build uh maybe a following and then build a business out of this and then you know um, monetize it and and all of that but i think and that was like non-christian content Mm -hmm. and then i think during around like the pandemic i started to really almost feel like this sense like obligation is not the right word but it was almost felt like I had ju- I just have to do something about this okay. which is create uh, Christian content for women using social media and why social media I think part of it is because um, it's the the space that I am familiar with I've never built a following by the way but I spent mm. <laughs> a lot of yeah. time on it I've spent a lot of time creating content for it and for my personal channels stuff like that and I think it was really feeling like this is almost something that God has given to me and it's whether or not I say yes or I don't say yes. Mm. You know, I say yes or I say no. So I think where I am right now is that it really feels like it's obedience. Yeah. I wouldn't necessarily say that um, I'm super excited about it in okay. a sense and I, I will explain why. It's not that I hate it and I don't want to do it but I yeah. think for me there's a lot of hesitation and fear mm. that is tied into um, the thought of putting myself out there in such a yeah. way because I think speaking about faith and I know I know my kind of like style of communicating I'm, I'm a very personal kind of communicator meaning yeah. I will when I share I share out of like a very um Raw space. I, I'm. I. I. That's not easy to do. <laughs> I mean, and unedited. Yeah. 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 But I think it's also because that kind of sharing is what draws me to other people. So I know that for me, that's also the the way I share. That's what comes naturally. Okay. But at the same time, I think it it feels um, very exposing, and. Yeah, so so mm. I think that's that's why there's a certain yeah. element of that fear. So I think where I am, why I say it feels more like obedience is because I know that um, there is the gifting. God has given me mm. that gifting for you yeah. know communicating, for uh, to a certain extent speaking and, and connecting with people. But I am actually really not comfortable at the thought of having my face out on a public platform like YouTube yeah. where if okay. anyone even if no one knew me but if anyone just like got hold of my name they could google it and they'll yeah. find all these content I think yeah. I think that was what really held me back for a very long time just that it's a very uncomfortable feeling for me I'm not I'm not someone who yeah. I don't know I feel like maybe things have changed with age but where yeah. I am right now I'm not I'm not like super excited about like oh my gosh like a thousand people are gonna watch this. Actually, the thought of a thousand people watching it is what scares me. Okay, it's yeah. really really scary. Okay. The thought of like having yeah. you know people actually uh, watching some of my stuff. Mm. So, so I think that's where I am right now. The the main motivation for even posting anything on girl or girl is is because I feel like it's obedience. But of yeah. course, and okay. of course, besides that, it's also I really feel like it's it's things that will help people mm. you know yeah. Okay. Mm. yeah yeah wow so there's that tension there whereby you've acknowledged that i mean you have that gift thing you are confident and you're very clear in the way that you speak but at the same time the medium opens you up to so many other mm. people who will be vulnerable. hearing and knowing who you are so it makes you vulnerable mm. yeah and that is a very scary thing mm. um and uh, actually that leads into the next question actually the next wow, question bam. is what are the challenges or dangers of yeah. putting yourself out there on social media. Mm. Now, I initially put the order there as you first, but mm. actually maybe if it's okay, I'll, okay, I'll yeah, ask media yeah. first. Yeah. So, like my mom said, what are the dangers? You see, my mom have this theory. So, <laughs> she will never ask me to put her face on, on you know, I have my own face. Okay, right? So, right. any family gathering, my mom said, don't put my face. Don't put oh, face. don't take picture of her. Because you know why, right? Because her face, right, they will cut out and put her in the... <laughs> <laughs> in the bad website oh, wow, really? in, and as you see the what? body and the face is my mom <laughs> <laughs> I think <yeah. laughs> actually actually you say that I do that I do that to the SPTC lecturer a lot of times uh. yeah that's why so my mom is really worried like oh no I, it's either 
either your detail is going to get exposed and they're going to misuse it. Yeah. Or is that they're gonna? Yeah, definitely. My mom yeah, is more, more of the securities issue. Yeah, definitely. Um, for some, maybe it's being um, being vulnerable and being judged. Yeah, yeah I can. I but see for that. Me, no problem. Yeah. <laughs> for, yeah, that's the thing. So, <laughs> wait. The question was, what are the dangers? Dangerous, so, right. so it seems to be a generational thing. You know, different people will perceive mm. different levels of um, mm. like risks. I mean, yeah, I mean, vulnerable in a way, being honest, but you don't. As long as you don't say words that are offending. Okay. Mm. It should not be a much attention to draw on you and people say, maybe you have your opinions and people okay. have different opinions going to be there. Okay, yeah. But don't say it in a very vulgar or diminishing way that people are going to use it like, oh, I'm going to step you. Yeah. I'm going to hunt you down. Like okay. Liam Neeson, oh, I'm going to hunt you down. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where you are. <laughs> yeah. And it comes to me. So it's basically, so it's either my mom says, either my face appears on, on, a, on the wrong side of the web. Yeah. <laughs> or, or people's going to be coming you at the at yeah, and I think it's just being very, being conscious about that. I think uh, that's one thing about being fearful, and yes, that's something to be dealing with as well. But also being conscious about mm. how you are perceived, and mm. then so just just knowing that someone is listening to what you're saying, and so saying in a way that it won't be misunderstood, mm. or uh, in a way that will encourage them more than it will discourage mm. them. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Okay. All right. Can I come back to you, Mayfan? Yeah. yeah. Can. Yeah, I think you know. Um, but I'm um, just continuing off what Kelvin said. That's why I'm also like realizing more and more that there's so much wisdom that mm. is required um, yeah. when we do put ourselves out on social media. And to a certain extent, I can almost see why, why it's almost like why if God were to call me, the calling is being activated now and not when I was younger. Okay. Because I, I think who I am now and even who I am like five years ago or even definitely 10 years ago is very different. Okay. And how I would have perceived even like... Um, so you needed to grow first I needed, as a person? Yeah, yeah, to, yeah, yeah. There's yeah. a certain amount of... Um, I think identity is really important. You yeah. really need you really need to know who you're rooted in yeah. when, and what That's you true. are rooted in. Yeah. Because otherwise social media is like it's a mad space. Yeah. It's crazy. I so I, I feel like again. although I've been using social media for so many years, mm. you know, for personal reasons and all that, my relationship with social media is really a very much a love hate relationship. Mm. Okay. You right. know? Yeah. So where I am right I now that, is that yeah. I don't actually spend time scrolling. Obviously I'm posting stuff, but I don't scroll. So I I, I hear that a lot. So a lot yes. of people who create content, right, mm. actually don't consume very yeah. much because they're so busy. <laughs> like it's Whoa. like it's like the chef who doesn't actually eat he's very skinny when <laughs> is he cook fine dining he eat instant noodle. Correct, right. <laughs> well that too. Sometimes sometimes can be the opposite effect. Yeah, yeah. but but I, I know what you mean, yeah. Yeah, so I the people do when I do scroll it's because I'm searching out that person intentionally or yeah. I'm searching yeah. out the specific information but I'm not doing like mindless scrolling I've stopped that for a very long time uh, but I do post content yeah and I think in this season wrestling with uh, you know the obedience but as the tension that came with, that comes with the fear and the yeah. hesitation uh, it's really made me realise that wow number one wisdom is needed but then number two I have really needed to learn first who I am okay. in God mm. before I start going out there and then like sharing my thoughts mm. and you yeah. know because because okay. it is exposure right yeah and one of my uh, videos I posted <laughs> recently on, on Instagram which very little views and but that's the exact thing that I see sometimes I check and I'm like one view zero views oh praise the lord no. <laughs> oh you, you, you're happy that they're low <laughs> zero and one okay, view wow, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah so I think I think even um, exposure is something like I feel okay. like I I yeah. need to practice in this season. I okay. need to practice getting used to the idea that hey, when I put this out, I'm not making it a private video. It's a public okay. video because actually it's very yeah. uncomfortable for okay. me. Like I'm not I I'm not excited about it. Right? Mm. Like like I feel like there's a lot to account for. Okay. Mm. Yeah. There's there's a certain like I'm responsible for what I said. I'm yeah, responsible for what I've shared But also If anyone were to respond to me Whether positively or negatively okay. I'm responsible for that My response to that Yeah Yes mm. Yes you I would know? say that Not just creating the content But sometimes All the times in the comments right? People write as if they're anonymous But actually you're writing as you mm. And there's a certain responsibility you, When you put anything mm -hmm. online Not mm -hmm. just when you post a picture or a mm. video But actually even when you're liking something you mm. know, Is that wise? Or when you're commenting especially I think mm. that Then exposes a lot about yeah. what you really think of who you are. Yeah. Um, mm. 
I, I can share share a very real example, something that I have been really kind of wrestling with. Mm. Um, so my content is specifically for women because my platform, I want it to, mm. to address women, right? Mm. Um, one of the things that I posted last year was a series of articles mm. on singleness. Yeah, yeah. And okay. I don't know start. if it's the nature of the topic or whatever, okay. but, but I actually pulled back for a while after that article, that series of article got published because I realized that sometimes men were responding to it. You know, it's like, it's, it's, it was really, really <laughs> uncomfortable to me, especially I think it made me realize okay. like, man, I, I'm a woman, I'm a single woman mm. and I'm exposing okay. myself like mm. this. And then obviously the topic that I'm talking about, I want to talk about it to women, but it's resonating with men as well. Mm. And then when a man wants to connect with you on the topic of singleness, it's like, it's so, you know, okay, like, okay. like how, how, okay. how do I do this? And it really scared me. Mm. Oh, really? For a while, okay. because right. um, I mean, I, it's not like I had a lot of um, responses, but you know, you also have like the one or two odd ones, like, "Hey, where are you from? How old are yes. you? <laughs> Call me, Can baby. Can I get to know you?" <laughs> and then I'm like, oh. "I'm not surprised though." Exotic, right? And yeah. I'm like, you know, and, and hey, but you knew this would happen, right? It's like actually no. Up and then, up and Sorry, then. I I, no, I didn't. Okay, right. So oh, I think okay. I think at one point when I started getting that, I really wrestled with God. I was like, oh, what is this? Like I I'm doing this because I want to obey you, but but I don't know how to deal with this, you know. Um, <laughs> yeah. So Simon, I so I think after that, that's why I think I, after I published that series of articles, it took almost a year before I came up with something else because wow, it was so scary. Okay. It right. was so okay. scary. Mm. And and yeah. obviously after posting the videos, like not not like there's a lot, but God lah, you know, like <laughs> again and then I'm like <laughs> But I think where I am right now is that I, I've also realized like um it's very important for probably for me to set down some ground rules for myself. And okay. I yeah. think I think That's wise. I think the safest yeah. thing is just um, unless it's you know people like I personally know like Kelvin who's a friend or whatever mm -hmm. but if it's strange people like strangers I'm my personal ground was that I'm not going to respond to them if I know that it's a guy um, oh. because I just mm. don't think it's appropriate okay. and okay. there's a certain yeah. integrity oh. it will send a message as well yes th there's yeah. a certain integrity that I feel like I need to to upkeep especially if it's a platform for women and I'm oh, a single okay. woman yeah. And, yeah. And, and now that I realise okay speaking about singleness it's a it's a topic that obviously resonates with both both genders, okay. but I'm very clear that I'm not here to to speak to the guys. Yeah, so yeah. it's it's about keeping the integrity intact, the soul. Wow. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Anything to respond to that, Lydia? No, no, no. Well, it's called the wonders of the internet. You know, you're gonna have you're gonna attract both the good and the bad and the ugly. Yes, so that's true. You gotta. Yeah. yeah, and it goes both ways. That's the thing. When you put something out things can come back. Yeah. <laughs> Whether in form of comments or DMs or even just likes and they can be yeah, good and bad. You should respond with a God Bible verse to that guy. <laughs> something whole, <laughs> something theological. Yeah, I, 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 don't, I, don't know, I don't know about that. Yeah, because <laughs> again, also your response, you yeah. know, can either feed or... Oh, really? Can, yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. Like, oh, yeah. this, hey, babe, you know, call me. Like, yeah, but you, you can call God at this <laughs> Something like that, you know? And then he will see that he just run away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. You know, there are all these troublemakers. I think they just like to see the world burn. And oh, yes. <laughs> I mean, sometimes that's all they're looking for. They're just yeah. looking for a response. Yeah. And actually, if you go anything deeper, you know, people who are only used to commenting one line at a time or liking posts, mm. they don't, they've forgotten the art of just having proper conversation or just being courteous, mm. for example. Yeah. Yeah. Ethics, ethics in the net. Yeah. <laughs> we definitely need that ethics yeah. in the internet. Yeah, we are doing a module on ethics as well. <laughs> okay. we, we might do an episode yeah, yeah. on that. It's so relevant. It's yeah. so, so, so good. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, things that you do and who you are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we are talking about the dangers about mm. um, going online. You were talking about external dangers like risks. Mm, you are talking yes. connectedly, actually, internal dangers. Integrity. You know, so. your own integrity mm. and mm. how you respond to it and how you know you can either shape the the response to it as well. Mm. Uh, for me, what I I think, uh, for me, one thing that I've noticed is that I I said that you know I try to create a first impression. It's often a different impression. People think I'm not the person I am because maybe I appear a certain way. Okay. And, you know, even even through this, you know, it might seem like we're all like super enthusiastic, but we actually don't talk at length as much. It's because we have a topic, yeah. you know, there's a camera. Yeah. And everyone has a YouTube voice or face. It doesn't matter who it is, your pastor as well. Everyone has a certain way of speaking to make themselves more clear, uh, more approachable, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. 
And um, that is one real danger that people will then create a perception of you that might not be you. Face. Now, a lot of that I admit is my own fault. I'm the one who made those videos. <laughs> but at the same time, I think it means as well that um, it, it's really, really important that whatever you put out there is a subset of a real you know, community, a real kind of engagement that you have in real life. Mm. So if the main way that you communicate with people is only through, oops, Okay, that, that camera just went off. We depend on this. All right. <laughs> so if yeah. the only way that you, you can make people is only through online, only yeah. through DMs, that's, that's a big red flag already. Mm. Yeah, so it's, it's maybe a healthy thing for you know, social media to be just um, an accurate mirror, an accurate additional to this, mm. you know, hanging out yeah. with people, talking to one another. Genuine. Yeah, genuine, genuine. Yeah, it genuine. keeps, keeps things real. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think I think the camera turning off is a good Sorry. signpost to maybe bring things to a close. <laughs> yes, yes. So, oh, class yeah. class yeah. is starting oh, class soon. soon already. Yeah. Oh, it's yes, three, three o'clock. Okay. okay, all right. Okay, so we end with just one piece of advice, one last thing to take away for people who are thinking of starting going on social media. And if we can go maybe Lydia and then me and then mm -hmm. end with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, I think we all talk about finding what, what was your audience that you want to speak to and the purpose yeah. in what you do. It definitely push you. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Finding that. Finding that purpose. I mean, uh. but it's, you don't need to like take forever. It's more like get going. Even though it's not the true purpose, but you just start somewhere small. Yeah. Start somewhere small. Don't, don't go that big yet. Yeah. I want to save poverty. You know, I want to be... <laughs> <laughs> that, that's great. You can maybe like start by being giving kind. Like just kind, small kind act. Starting small. Small, starting small. Starting now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Basically, yeah. it is the starting now that is hard. Uh, the yeah. get going is get the hardest going. part. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I appreciate that. Yep. Yeah. Um, for me, it's just find friends. If, <laughs> I mean, if you want to How do something uh, fast, you know, do it yourself. Yeah. But you want to do something that has meaning and that will go a long distance, do it with friends. Yeah, yeah. Mm. that's why. Mm, I think for me, um, being grounded within your community and the mm. word of God is really important because yeah. social media is really, really, it's a really loud, noisy space yeah. um, and obviously by posting content we are contributing to the noise uh, right yeah, we are exactly. I mean yeah, if you're yeah, thinking yeah, about yeah. it yeah. Noise, what yeah, but well, of course like um, we want to contribute to the noise in a good way but at the same time it also means that uh, we are open to, to listening to a lot of things mm. um, and just because you know, we post Christian content doesn't mean that <laughs> <laughs> everything should be taken. Like, like yes. there's still discernment. You still yes. need to discern yes. what yeah. you are seeing um, mm. from even Christian influencers or, mm. or content creators. So I think the grounding um, is exactly what Helvin said, having friends. Mm. You, you need people who can push, who can kind of call you out if maybe you've yeah. gone yeah. a little bit astray yeah. uh, or people who sometimes even question like actually why did you say this mm. why did you post this mm. or people that you can bounce ideas off like if you're talking about wanting to create content for mm. for real right yeah so I yeah. feel like I'm still trying to find that that uh, group of people mm. Mm. but I think I've been very blessed to have um, some really close friends that I, I could uh, share even before I started anything to mm. just tell them like I really feel like God's calling me to share stuff on social media but I'm really scared like, I have a lot of mm. hesitation and yeah you did you did talk to us as well mm. about this stuff yeah, doing yeah. so I think I think that's really uh, important mm -hmm. yeah. yeah that's really great that's really great awesome. thank you guys um, thank that you. was really really fun to do actually Yay! now we have to go for class <laughs> <laughs> our lecturers keep popping their head through the window. They are quite interested. At maybe they yeah. will be our next guest. Yeah, we, we actually have space for another guest, <laughs> yeah. maybe. But Mark. let us know. Let us know if this was helpful, if there was something that we could be talking about that could really mm. help you in your own journey mm. as an individual, or maybe you're a ministry thinking of, you know, being faithful with mm. the social media um, tools that you have. You know, let us know and maybe we'll we'll do it in the next episode. Yeah. Okay, take care. Bye. Bye.